All right, hey, welcome back into Antioch Tulsa's Relational Values. We are getting into being courageously together. Courage might be the word for this one. And uh, I got my good friend Jonathan Crawley in here to uh, yeah, help us take this on. Welcome, dude. Thank you. Glad how's, to be here. How's your soul today? It's good. Eh? It's S- good. Still saved? Still saved. Wow, that's such great news. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, well, hey, Jonathan and his wife, Rachel, moved up here to Tulsa, back home. Grew up here. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like a Tulsa native. Um, after being away for quite a few years and uh, have jumped into planting this church with us. And uh, if there's a word that describes Jonathan, it's probably passion. Uh, one that is consistently displaying this courage. So glad you're here, man. Glad to be here. Um, courageously together in this relational value, how we see it in the life of Jesus. Uh, the definition that we are using is, as the body of Christ, we are choosing to live undivided. Undivided. The body of Christ, we're choosing to live undivided. And so, Jonathan, I would love to hear, you know, we moved up here in June, but how has this uh, relational value played out in your life over the last six months? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think there are two areas that I've really seen this play out the most, um, and that's in, like, really close, like, relationships, and then also in, like, this broad, more, like, like broad disagreement with people um and so that one i i really struggle the most with i think is in seeing like okay like we're so divided as a nation like depending on the issue like abortion or gun control or masks or whatever it is it's like it's it's almost like ingrained in us to to see someone on the other side of an argument or an idea and like immediately put up walls towards those people. And so like I've seen that so much in my own life where it's like, okay, like I have to choose to see people the way that God does. And I feel like that really does tie into like simple honor of like, like, okay, this person has value and like, I'm going to choose to like, like put aside my own, like whatever is going on inside of me so that I can like pursue relationship with you. Um, and I, I think, I think the other is definitely like in close relationships. Um, and so like in marriage and in family and different things like that, where it's like, okay, I, I have to choose to continue to like, be connected with you like even whenever there's like pain or frustration or disagreements or whatever it is you get to the end of a hard day or a hard week or like whatever it is it's like it's at those moments that you have to choose like i'm still going to be like like connected to you i'm still going to choose intimacy with you yeah the the you just said pain or disappointment and acknowledging those two things then gives you permission to choose courage. Mm-hmm. Like you almost can't choose to be courageously with someone without those things. Yeah. And it's like uh, in anyone on the planet ever experienced relationships when that didn't happen? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Right. Um, well, hey, how, how, like, as we're kind of describing our experiences, how do you see this? Um, or how have you seen this in the life of Jesus that's really impacted you? Yeah, I, I'm i more of a big picture kind of person, so I kind of yeah, take yeah, totally. it up to 50,000 feet and then get lower. But I see like just the way that like the Lord throughout human history has decided like he's going to choose like people <laughs> like it, humanity is his plan A and there's no plan B. And so like, like he has a plan from the beginning to redeem humanity back to himself. Um, And like in Jesus, you really see that in the way that he chose, like he, he exhibited connection with the father perfectly. Like he said, like, I am, I only do what I see the father doing and I only say what I hear the father saying. And so like he chose to like remain and abide um, in his connection with the father, even to the point of like death, even to totally. the point of like, he knew that was leading him to the cross. And like, and then he exhibits that to humanity and the way that he, like, even on the cross, he says like, 
father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing um like he chooses to be courageously like with people even as they're murdering him yeah. and like he never turns off his connection with people like like even to that extreme point it, even you think about him choosing his uh mode of coming to the earth was in a very dependent state hmm as a baby <laughs> like that emphasizes i think the courage required to be united with humanity mm. choosing to take on the cross like you said and not just forgiving them on the cross but making access for all of us to continue to be in relationship with god i mean it, it's it's he chose the ultimate choice of death mm. to be with us, mm. which is mind blowing <laughs> to then give ourselves permission to be like, well, I'm not going to associate with you because you're blah. Mm. So even if they're trying to kill you, the model of Jesus was be t to be together. Yeah. And you know, you're totally right. As you talk through the state of uh, just culture and how quickly we put labels on ourselves and on others that separate us from each other. Hmm. It's like we're just choosing to put up the divide and is the opposite of what Jesus modeled. Yeah. For sure. Well, can you, what are some uh, uh, ways in the last maybe six months, maybe some specific instances where this has kind of been put to test for you and hmm. put into practice? Hmm. I really, like, I, I think one of the biggest areas that I have seen this play out for me is... <laughs> is i'll get alone with the lord uh, out by a lake or something like that and he'll say like he'll just start speaking and so like he challenged me with um like if anyone if anyone would be my disciple then they must take up their cross daily and follow me <laughs> and i i think that the like it's really easy to to get into your modes and your rhythms and, and just kind of like go through life. And then like, I, but like that really arrests me. <laughs> it's like, it's like God is like, and he's inviting me into intimacy, but he's saying like, like whoever would be my disciple must pick up their cross daily and follow me. And so like, there's this choice every single day. And I, I think it takes a lot of courage to, especially like as you're like stepping out in relationship with the Lord, but it's like, like, okay, I'm going to pick up my cross today. I don't even really know what that means yet, <laughs> but I'm going to do that. And that, I think that takes so much courage, um, but like, it's the best. And mm -hmm. like, that's the way that we like have intimacy with the Lord. Totally. Um, and uh, I think just, I think really one of the hardest things has been like, okay, this person has a very different view than I do. <laughs> this person, it's like, it's like almost a shock to my system whenever I see someone who like, who disagrees uh, on like a fundamental level than I do in the different areas of like, that are so divisive. Uh, and it's like, I have to like, almost calm myself down and say, okay, like, like I am going to choose to move towards you and not move away from you, yeah. even though like, like there is this disagreement and like, there's just something about that, that like, like grows intimacy with people whenever right. you choose, like, I'm not going to move away from you. I'm totally. not going to disconnect. I'm not going to allow like this initial wall that goes up to be the final say on our relationship. Like I'm going to continue to move towards you. I think this one is shocking. Um, Robin and I, in the, in the introduction, we were talking a lot about this, how uh, essentially in all these relational values, you know, what we're finding is relationship is essentially how we foster the kingdom of heaven. Mm. First with our relationship with God, so that we can then share it in our relationship with people. Yeah, And... We were talking a lot about how the mission so drove Robin and I early on. And what we're discovering is we were perceiving people as objects for the mission. Mm. As opposed to people are just the context for the kingdom of heaven to mm. come to earth. And people can choose to engage it or not. But 
you take that neighbor that let's say they're an atheist or they have a clear sign that is fundamentally very different from your belief system. Like we believe that we are one with the living God. Mm. And so to then choose to not engage that person in relationship is in some ways limiting their access to God. Mm. Right? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And what we're being challenged by is the mission of like, oh, you are an object and so I'm going to love you so you get saved is really weird. Mm. The model that Jesus had is, oh no, everyone is created in my image. Every single person has value because I put it in them. Mm. And we get to partner with God by being in relationship. Mm. And the tension or the courage that's required is when we choose to do relationship with people we don't understand or people we even disagree with. Mm. That's good. And on our end of the table, we also carry God. (laughs) It's like he can do whatever he wants, Mm. you know, when you're in relationship. Mm. And I think that's been profoundly challenging of do I believe that? Mm. Or am I so focused on my own comfort? Mm. Yeah. I mean, even like, you know, we all moved here, right, from different places. So even just the question of, do you know your next door neighbors? Mm. Like, uh, do I have to know them? I was like, no, but it does require some level of courage mm. to be together with them. Yeah. What if they're weird? What if they have security dogs that are going to eat me? <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm ranting. Um, so anyways, in in in, uh, in your own life, playing this out in the last six months, uh, the last even three months, uh, looking at Jesus display this, what, what do you think it would look like if we kind of in our pockets of communities lived out being courageously together? Hmm. I think I think courageously together is is one of those things where like you see the fruit of it down the line and like you don't totally. really notice something happening like super exciting or flashy or anything but it's the one that's like underneath the surface that's like slowly growing you know like like I've just seen I've seen that in the way that the Lord has pursued me my entire life and I see like I see the way that like I get to this point and it's like wow like Lord you are so for me and you're like like that's incredible and like the in the deepest relationships that I have it's the same way it's like it, we have chosen to not like disconnect from each other and Mm -hmm. so because of that there's this incredible intimacy and richness in relationship where it's like it like it's almost like like other things become peripheral because we're just connected with each other you know and like we've gone through battles together and we've gone through Mm -hmm. life together and like there's this trust that's grown uh, because we have chosen not to divide uh, over like whatever it is that's in front of us it's like i'm choosing to remain connected with you and and it's like it, it bears so much fruit throughout life going forward where it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like yeah. I didn't see this happening necessarily, but like, like there's this incredible relationship that's built because we've chosen to like mm-hmm. exhibit courage and remain with each other. Yeah. And, and it seems to me like as you, you probably get in these moments where you reflect back on, you know, let's say six months, a year, three years, whatever. Uh, in whatever the context is. And I think you just are like being connected to something, being seen, being known. Mm. It, it's it's like, I don't know, like it's health. Mm. Even if it's weird in mm. the sense of like, you know, you got a crazy uncle and that one cousin that's a little off and to the left and that one guy that, you know, it's hard to track when he's talking but it was like, well, that doesn't, those are just external things. We have chosen to push in and do relationship and not separate from, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it is, even big, important things, mm. you know. Um, and I think just that benefit of being seen, known, and connected to something is how the kingdom of heaven manifests. Yeah. 
I mean, obviously, it has to be rooted in Jesus. He's the one that says he's the head. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. I think I feel grieved when people choose to isolate because they don't trust other people's perspective or their thoughts or their beliefs. Mm. And it just you just separate yourself into isolation. Yeah. And I think that's the opposite of what Jesus did. Yeah. Um, well, if you, um, you know, listening to this, what is <clears throat> one thing that you would encourage people, if they want to start practicing being courageously together this week, um, what is one thing that they could do to begin discovering this in Jesus and putting this into practice? Yeah, I, I think if I was to encourage someone, I would say like, observe this week, what are triggers or what are areas where you feel like walls are coming up Mm. in relationships with people and in relationship with God? Mm. Um, Like what, what is it? Like if there's something that comes up and it's like, I want to disconnect, I want to remove myself from you. I want to push away from you. Like notice that, like just like as you're starting like a journey in this and walking in these values, like just take notice of what are the things where walls have come up, like, and you want to remove yourself from relationship. Well, wow, that's so good. Like even just writing them down. And yeah. There are probably a lot of like normal rhythms that you in some ways need to shock yourself out of. Yeah. Or it's normal to isolate. Yeah. Ooh, that's so good. So if you want to put uh, courageously together in practice this week, the exhortation would be, Simply observe your life this week, not only your life with others, but also your life with God. Are there places where you're withdrawing or not wanting God to be a part of because you don't know what's going to happen? Or are there relationships, friends, coworkers that you're withdrawing from because you don't understand or you don't want them, you don't trust their perspective? Uh, And let that be your starting point. Take that to Jesus. Say, Jesus, help. (laughs) It's usually a great prayer. Um, Cool. Well, Jonathan, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, absolutely. It was fun. It's been a delight. We are six months into Antioch, Tulsa. Let's go. Pumped for what's on the future. I see what you did there. Let's go. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go. Jonathan and Rachel have this thing for like, oh, well, Austin's, we're learning how Austin communicates. (laughs) And so they're taking on some of my phrases. (laughs) I feel seen and loved. (laughs) (laughs) All right, bro. Well, till the next episode, thank you all for joining us. We'll see you all soon.